Hello everyone, my name is Flavio Pereira. I'm part of the technical enablement team uh, and OCI. Uh, and today we're gonna cover the storage level 200 lesson. Um, on the storage lesson, we're gonna cover topics around local NVMe devices, block storage, and file storage service. I'm gonna give you some more details about that, how performance works on each one of those layers, how you can apply those type of storage. Uh, on your workloads and how you architect the storage to better suit um, on your um, on your application when you're moving that to OCI. So the, the first portion of this is local NVMe devices. So we're going to talk about local NVMe devices, how we can use it, what is op what the options available uh, inside of OCI to use that, and how that can how what kind of performance you can have uh, with local NVMe as well. So just to give an overview. Um, Local NVMe is available, of course, in OCI. You can get access to local NVMe based on the shape that you actually deployed inside of OCI. So if you pick one of the dense I.O. shapes, so every shape that's called dense I.O. will have a local NVMe device associated to it. So those devices are uh, drives associated to, to, to the server, so you can uh, get the raw device and then format and put in the file system that you want to and then use that uh, NVMe to hold your application uh, to actually store all the data that needs high performance uh, and extremely demand I.O. So use cases like big data HPC um, will benefit from the local NVMe devices to get the best um, you know, throughput I.O. and laten latency, uh, latency uh, of those, uh, those devices. Okay, so as you can see, you can go up to 51.8 terabytes of local storage. So you can have uh, one of the shapes, uh, the barometer shapes can give you uh, up to 51 terabytes of storage. Around 3 million IOPS, so if you combine all the NVMe devices together uh, on one of those barometer shapes and run some benchmark uh, around the NVMe, you can get up to 3 million IOPS uh, on that. Okay, so just to give an overview, and again, all the, all the shapes with Denisio on name, you have local NVMe device associated to that, okay? Um, so one big thing about around NVMe is like, what happens if that NVMe device fails? So as, you, as, you, as I mentioned, the NVMe is locally attached to the shape. So it's not, uh, it's not something you, you can deattach the NVMe once you terminated the instance. When you terminated the instance, you actually delete the NVMe device, right? Um, that's not the same as rebooting the instance. If you reboot the instance, all the data will be preserved on NVMe. But if you deleted the instance, all the data inside of that NVMe will go away. Okay, so do you have to keep that in mind? Uh, if there is any problems with the NV NVMe device, if for some reason that device fail, uh, the best way to recover and best way to do it is actually uh, provide uh, launch a second instance of a dense I/O shape and just copy the data over from uh, that um, server to another one. And of course, make sure you have a backup policy in place. So it's highly recommended that you take backup often of the data that's hosted in, uh, on top of the NVMe device. So this gives you um, a layer of protection. And if something went wrong with the, with the shape or with the device, uh, you can restore that data in another machine. So keep that in mind. You can do backups of your NVMe device. We highly recommend it to do that. Another thing you have to do is um, create a softer RAID uh, using those NVMe devices. So when you when you have the NVMe devices, it's all raw devices available. You can create a RAID uh, to protect the data, and then you can go all the way to RAID, uh, you know, 10, RAID 1, uh, and to mirror the device. So actually you have this protection in case something went wrong. We can just... Um, um, uh, take out the NVMe device and replace that and your data uh, in your machine will, ke will keep the data uh, in place, right? So the ship will be up and running without any problems, okay? Uh, of course, there's multiple um, tools that can help you to make copy and synchronize data from one place to another. For example, you can attach a block volume along with your... Um, instance which which hosts the NVMe device and then rsync the data from the NVMe to the block storage. That's one way to make a copy to it. Uh, of course you can tar GZ, you can compress the data from the NVMe device and move that over to an object storage uh, if you want. Uh, that's one way to do it. 
and, and, and have a copy of that data uh, placed on NVMe. So those, those are a few options. And then keep in mind, if the NVMe device fails, uh, there's a couple ways you can recover, you can uh, get back to your data. But you have to have the premises that you have a backup in place and you have a way to, to protect the data using, using the RAID uh, configuration. So here's some of the NVMe performance um, uh, metrics. Uh, this is just a slide showing how much of performance you can get on some of the NVMe's. So if you're looking at that, uh, we're just doing a test in one single NVMe um, device, uh, running a 50-50 read and write operation using a benchmark tool called, um, um, that came from Cloud Harmony. So Cloud Harmony provide uh, a benchmark tool, you can access their website, it's a GitHub repo, you can download the tool and execute that on, on the server. I'm going to go do a quick demo um, as well and show you how you can do a field command uh, to get um, similar results results um, around the IOPS here. But as you can see, just show you a graph uh, of 500k IOPS you can get on a read-write operation on NVMe device. So I highly recommend you test it, you can get similar results and understand um, how how powerful is the performance of NVMe devices locally on, on your machines. This is another example of using a read and write uh, for all the NVMe devices combined. So you have that combined because you can have shapes with multiple devices, you can combine those, you can have go all the way up to 3 million IOPS uh, of uh, performance here. Okay, uh, we're really proud of the performance that we have around NVMe. We offer uh, SLAs um, on top of it. So you can access the website uh, to get the SLA information um, on NVMe performance. As you can see on the, on the table, you do have dense IO shapes, all the dense IO shapes available today in OCI, and then the amount of um, uh, minimum supported IOPS you can get. So on a VMM dense IO 1.4, you can get over to 200K IOPS, okay? So if you wanna do similar tests uh, on, your, on your own and you wanna test it out, uh, you can go on GitHub repository, get the Cloud Harmony uh, benchmark uh, tool, and then execute that against um, against your VM shape. All those are measured against the 4K, 4K block um, sizes, so you can change that to 8K uh, if you're doing other uh, specific tests, so you can see the performance and how that will work uh, for your environment. Okay, we highly recommend you to do some tests so you can get the, the, the performance and numbers that you're expecting to. All right, so let me do a quick demo. I'm gonna show you how you spin up a VM, uh, then say you get access to the NVMe device. Um, how that's going to be presented to you, the operating systems, and how you can, um, you know, operate this operate this device. All right, so I just want to give a quick demo of the VM, VM uh, Densio shape, which has uh, NVMe devices associated to it. So I do have one VM on my Oracle account, so I'm logged in on my OCI account here. Uh, if you go to Compute Instances, um, just go back here real quick, and then I can see I have a couple uh, VM Densios uh, that I deploy. One is 2.16 and one is 2.8. So this one has one device, and it one has two devices of NVMe associated to the shape. Uh, what, again, when you create this, the instance, you can select the shape and then you choose the VM dense. Uh, any dense shape will have NVMe associated to, uh, to the server. So let's go check here real quick. Um, I'm going to do an SSH to the server and I'm just do an SSH here. Okay, so this is my uh, VM dense IO01 uh, machine and I'm just going to do sudo su become a root and then if I do if I install a package there's a package you can install that's called NVMe CLI so you can install this uh, package uh, on your operating system and then if you do NVMe list you can see the NVMe devices associated to your server so you see both uh, NVMe's each one with 6.40 uh, terabytes so 6.4 terabytes av available so around 12 uh, 12 terabytes uh, associated to this uh, this server. So I can create a, create a RAID one based on those disks 
then can mirror each other and then have access uh, to my application based on the on the RAID device that I cre I created, right? So yeah, this is the device. Uh, as you can see, it's a raw device. There's nothing on it. Um, I can just go and format the device uh, and create a partition, uh, put it in the file system, and then um, and then mount the device inside of my operating system. So it's locally attached. If I do a CAD proc partitions, uh, I can see that the NVMe devices are available here as well. All my my boot volume on the VM is on. The, uh, on the, on the uh, storage side, on the block storage side, and then I have um, uh, the NVMe devices um, ex as an extra disk associated to the VM shape, okay? So you can install command call FIO. If you do yum install FIO, uh, this is a benchmark tool that you can use to um, verify the performance of your device. I do have it in that installed on my machine. Uh, I'm going to run this field command right here. I'm just going to get the device name of my NVMe. So dev NVMe 0 and 1. So this is the first device, the first NVMe device. Uh, I'm going to create a 10 gig uh, file on the block size of 4K. Uh, that's going to do a read and write operations. Uh, Operator, operation inside of the, the, um, the device, and then it's going to give us the result of, um, of the app. So when I execute that, uh, that's going to take a, a few uh, minutes here to, uh, to complete, um, but you can kind of see it's getting to the performance that we're actually looking for. So 200, um, you know, almost, um, almost 220 um, IOPS. K and IOPS, so you can see uh, that information. Once done, everything is going to be um, processed and show you here. So let's go just give a few minutes. I'll show you the, the results uh, of it. All right, so it's finished. Uh, and then if we if we check the, um, uh, the IOPS, uh, let's go here real quick and see if we can find that information. Scroll down. Yeah, there you go. So this is the IOPS that I was able to get on that NVMe device. So almost, uh, you know, 200K IOPS for a single uh, NVMe device. This is expected uh, for uh, this shape, right? So this is one way to to test it out um, and make sure that you have all the performance uh, required requirements uh, for your application. So if you design an application for high performance that needs low latency, uh, high throughput of data, you know, IOPS, NVMe devices is the recommended way uh, to do it. Couple things to keep in mind again: make sure you have a backup uh, of the data. Uh, copy that frequently to another um, storage. Could be an object storage, or it could be to another block volume uh, as well. Okay, yeah. I hope you like it. Uh, thanks for watching.